opened the scroll, he read, he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. And the reality of that is it's not just what these gentlemen do, but everybody um, that does not name the name of Christ is in jail. Something that Bob has shared with me before is they just don't necessarily have bars around them. People are in bondage to things. They're, in, they're stuck in situations of their own doing, and um, God wants to break through. And so these gentlemen, uh, every Thursday night in Warren County, make their way uh, over to the Warren County building, and then they um, get in there and do some ministry. What I like to do to start off with, guys, is talk us through a Thursday night. And what I mean by that is it's Thursday and it's like, and I know earlier on, uh, especially if Bob has something to share or any of the gentlemen have something to share, you've done some study of the Bible to put together your talk and stuff like that. But I'm thinking for each of you, and this doesn't necessarily have to be a long answer, each of you, what does Thursday around 5 o'clock look like for you? So, quickly. Well, I, I uh, actually it's probably just putting together the, the sermon and I'm still fighting about what I'm going to be saying and how I'm going to be saying it. And, uh, you know, you're always, you're always as, a, as a pastor or anybody that gives a speech, you're always, you know, is this the right one and, and that type of thing. And you just let it with the Lord. Um, and then uh, actually I'm getting ready to go. And, uh, and then Karen comes, my wife, and, and uh, she meets me at the door, lays hands on me and prays. And, and I think that's the big part of the whole night right there is because that, um, you know, I like to tell Don, who, who, who do, who's our praise team leader, and whoever's doing praise, and, you know, that's the most important part. You know, that's what gets me going. That's, that's the part that sets the pace for me. And, uh, and then uh, we just go to the, I go to the jail, and I, and I wait for these monsters here. To, to come up, you know. All right, and then uh, Tim, what's it looking like for you? Well, maybe my five starts at five in the morning on Thursdays because I go in for some early prayer over at CEF, but five in the afternoon is when I play tennis every week. There's a group of guys, and uh, we play at Dyer Park. Most of them are between 50 and 70, and uh, I can be smeared on any given day by some of those guys, and so it just, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and so I get through around 7, and I'm sweaty, and I throw on a pair of jeans and join these guys. Okay. Uh, sometimes um, it's preparing uh, maybe a little something, depending on what, what I'm doing. But a lot of times it's just maybe praying, waiting, um, just looking forward to it and showing up and, you know, just being willing to serve. Okay. And then Christian. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking about it long before, like I am going to be giving the first um, Thursday of the month message for the next six months and we're going to and I'm just going to let the Lord lead me in that direction. Uh, sometimes I get excited about what I want to maybe share with them but then I have to go back and say, okay Father, if this is something that you will for me then make it clear and if it's not, let's move on but I'm usually thinking about it uh, throughout the day a little bit at a time and then um, I, I, did you want also the description of what it looks like when we walk in and what I'll plays get out? There. I'll get there. Okay. Yeah. okay. But that's what it looks like for me. Okay. Um, is there ever any time that you don't feel like going? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you still go? Yes. yes. I know there's times when we have ministry, we don't feel like going, and then we don't go. Okay? And you'll never know what happened. And then there's times when you don't feel like going, and you go, you know, like I said on Wednesday, Karen puts a note on you, Bob, and sends you over to school. Um, <laughs> that it's like you're going, okay? And once you go, usually there's a blessing, if, I, if I'm figuring Amen. it out. Okay, and that's, and that's to encourage you that we can't go just on feelings. We can't go on how my day went or, or stuff like that. Sometimes we do. But if that's the way we're doing ministry, we aren't going to last long. Right. Just, so, Okay. Now to what Christian was talking about, and that is, so we're, we're, you know, you walk by, and they don't just let anybody in there. 
Okay, you do know that. You can't go, you know, I'd like to talk to some prisoners. And so, you know, I got something to say. It doesn't work that way. Talk us through what that looks like. And I'll interrupt you at a certain point if I'm not getting it. So anybody jump in. Well, Bob told me when uh, I expressed an interest in joining him that you got to go over there and you got to sign up. And, and they ask you for your Social Security number and all this other stuff to do a background check. And so I gave it to him about a year and a half ago. I never heard anything from them. <laughs> And uh, I just thought, well, you know, maybe they don't want me. <laughs> so, so I never went. Uh, and I don't know what, less than, you know, several months ago, we, I finally uh, talked to Bob about it. And, and Bob told me that, uh, Tim, just come on. They must, if they didn't say anything, it must be okay. And so when I went in and they heard Bob's name, it was all good. <laughs> so, okay, so he's Colonel Hogan to get no, you to stop. <laughs> so, or more like works. Schultz. Yeah. More like Schultz. Um, okay, so... So we have that. Okay, what else? Well, um, we, um, yeah. we walk through the first set of doors. Bob usually says something along the lines of jail ministry. It's a little different each time. Um, Wenzel, Spoonster, Bobby, he'll throw the first name or the, or the last name up. It really doesn't make any difference. They know that it's us, and they already got a camera on us. And then they open that door. We walk through another uh, area, an enclosure. Uh, we go through those locked doors, then we're in another enclosure area, and then we go up the elevator, which is fully locked, and we go up to that elevator, and we walk our way into another enclosure, and until we're all in there, then we're enclosed there, and then they let us into the back. Christian, you, you left out one of the weirdest parts, is that when you walk in the elevator, you don't push the buttons. Yeah, they push them for you, yeah. It's all, yeah, you're, 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 you just have to... Uh, Trust that they're going to take care of everything, <laughs> and, and they won't forget you. And sometimes they do, and uh, and we're like, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're still on the elevator. Uh, but uh, and then we go into the control room. Is that what it's right. called, Bob? Yeah, we call it the control room. It's a yeah. bullpen. It's a bullpen. Yeah. yeah, we call it the bullpen. <laughs> what does this room look like? What what's what is it? It's just basically a room that uh, they have. They have they have stations for three guards. Uh, usually there's only one or maybe two in there that are that are working the inmates and then uh, you have all the TVs that are on uh, up in the air and then you have them that's on on uh, on the tables also and nobody nobody does anything without them watching you okay um, they are watching whatever you know I can see I can see Noe when he comes late and Christian when he comes late and, <laughs> and, they're, and they're like, I'm a little late. You know, you hear everything. You see him on, it's pretty neat. You know, you, you see him down there and, uh, you know, so it's, uh, they do keep track of you. And, um, and that's, that's basically where it's at. And we just, it's actually a, an area that we kind of relax and talk about anything in there till they're ready. They, they take all the prisoners. There's three pods there, A pod, B pod, and C pod. And uh, what they do is they just round them up and, and they take them all into the gymnasium, make sure that they're set in where they're supposed to or whatever. Now, on these TV screens, do they see the prisoners or the, yes. the, the guys yes. in jail? Yes. I'll call them prisoners even though it's not a prison, it's a jail. Right. Um, and they can, so they can keep an eye on them and you can see what's going on. Men and women are in this jail? Yes. Yes. Okay. But you only minister, you guys only minister to the male inmates usually. Right. That's right. the case. Okay. But we can see the ladies also. Okay. okay. And not everybody has to go to chapel. No. It's not a requirement. No. 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 Okay. Um, so at a certain point, are you still in the bullpen when they're um, having them go into the gymnasium? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're never waiting in the gym for them and then they come in? No. Okay. No. Okay. And what's so they they're walking into the gym. What's their protocol? What do they have to do? What's going on? Well, basically, you know, the guards want them. Some a lot of times, you know, they're getting a little bit more looser right now, where they will allow them. Most of them will go in and sit around the walls. In other words, um, they have to have the butt on the floor, the back against the wall. 
That's that's and they got to have their, their reds on. They can't they, have white. Yeah, they can't they, got, have, they white can't have whites on. They have to have all the red uniform, the color of your Orange. tie there. And uh, that has to be on you know, all that at, at that particular time. And sometimes now when we go in, there's, there are some standing and talking because they don't get to see, pod B, don't get to see pod C and all that. And then a, a lot of times in the bullpen, I, I want to make you know that, you know, if, they, if they're going to bring some federal prisoners in or if they've had some problems between two, two uh, inmates, they will let us know, um, you know, hey, is it okay if we send them in? Don't think anything's going to be a problem, but if it does, we got somebody in there. And, and usually we just say, yeah, because he's in charge, not them. And that's the way we look at it, you know, so. And as you, so they're, they're all sitting around. Is there a, a methodology or a reason why their back is up against the wall? Yeah, because it, it, if anything would happen, they would have to make quite a few moves to get to us. Okay, and then the guard is up on the, he's up on the stairs up there, and then he can come down. Um, you know, most of the time, and Christian and myself, if, um, you know, when the things have happened and went down bad, uh, it was after it was over with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, me and Christian were standing it, together. It, you can tell them that story. It, it was a little bit, um, it was just kind of like a, you know, uh, hey, thank you for coming, and, and uh, asking for prayers, and we're all standing up, and they're calling pods, you know, B pod, to, to, go, back to, to go back to their cells, and that's when disruption takes place because um, because we're no longer in worship. We're just uh, we're just kind of you know like after church here, we find ourselves mingling out in the the foyer area. And would something because something that comes to my mind is. Like when we're sitting here, these in the front row aren't worried about somebody from behind doing something to them. I don't think you guys are worried. That's why you're sitting here. Saying, but but they would probably be scared. What if they did something to somebody? Yes. Or am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I when when Bob was saying their back up or their backs are up against the wall, I just because it's a it's a uh, square, it's a cube uh, room, and this is kind of like we're in the middle. And then they're sitting on the outside edge. Are they all around you? Yes. Like even as you're speaking, some are seen. Sometimes, back of you. sometimes. Okay. Yeah. If it's really full. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And have you had that? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, all right. That that makes sense. Um, and so as so now they're in there. Yeah. They're sitting down. You guys are up. What does a typical service look like? Well, I you know actually. Um, we we have songs. They, they they sing two songs. We have song. Uh, Bobby will come in and Bobby will. Uh, uh, I'll give him the song sheets. He will go around the room handing one to each each person. Um, and then because I want to hear Bobby, what's going on with you with that? You're handing them pieces. Of, are you talking to any of these guys or are you just handing out sheets? How does that look? Sometimes I mean a lot of them just say hi, thanks or whatever. I mean I try to you know look at them and. And let them, at first, when I went in there, I was kind of nervous about the whole jail experience, but <laughs> you find pretty quick that it's really not as bad as you would think. So mm -hmm. yeah. I like letting them know that I'm not scared of them or that I don't think little of them. You know, So I try to interact with them as I'm handing stuff out. Okay, excellent. And so th these are hand what are the so you hand out song sheets with different songs on them, but they really only want two songs. Is right. What well, <laughs> actually, what we say is I say pick two. They know when I say pick two, then they start, they're, they're waiting because if they got a favorite song, the first one number comes out, that's what we do. They'll go six and four, and you'll have five and three and two, and, you know, six and four is it, you know. And we, and we want them to be ready, you know. If you, want, if you want to sing a song, you better be ready because we're going to take the first two out. And then, uh, and then we sing the songs. And uh, now, what are those two songs that they usually like? Oh man, Amazing Grace and and uh, Victory, Victory and Victory Jesus, or Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, yeah, yeah, those uh, songs. Blessed Assurance and Victory are usually. Um, there's one other one that that. Um, Do they really sing out? Oh wow. And since we got Mr. Noe now, oh, yeah. now that Noe's here, we, he is like the Shekinah cloud comes in, <laughs> you know? I mean, when he sings, he harmonizes, and these guys, and he goes right over with them, and he just scoots right in between them. I love it. And, uh, and, and he sings his heart out, and, and it, really, uh, it really sounds fantastic. You just cannot, it's like singing in the shower, you know, and when you're in a gymnasium like that. singing in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> A lot um, better. Okay, so and so before Tim was was um, Christian the song leader, 
I mean, how, how does it play out? Well, Different times? Let me, let me fill in a few blanks here because I think, sure. uh, so we walk in, the song sheets are handed out. Sometimes Bobby hands them out. Sometimes we send them around and they pass them one to the other. Sometimes I pass them out. Um, sometimes I will go up and shake their hands, say, hey, how's it going? Good morning or good, after, good evening, how's, you know, uh, good to see you, just that sort of arrangement. And, and then um, we start to sing, and when, as Bob said, uh, Tim has made it really awesome to uh, harmonize, and it sounds so much better now. Uh, honestly, it really does. Um, and, uh, and then I pray for Bob's message um, right before. Sometimes I will throw in a, uh, an explanation of why we're here. Uh, sometimes we have new faces, and I will say, you know, for those of you that I see some unfamiliar faces, and for those of you that don't know who we are, uh, we are from Grace Bible. This is Bob the Chaplain of the Jail, and uh, we are here to give you, you know, uh, the opportunity for salvation, and we're here to provide some hope, and we just kind of explain that uh, a little bit so they understand, and we give them a little bit of history. But that doesn't happen all the time. That's just kind of when we have new, a new crowd. And then we, uh, I pray, and then uh, after I pray, I go sit down, and I kind of find a spot where I can plug myself in. And sometimes I will look for people that don't have a Bible or new faces. Yeah. And if they don't have a Bible, and I have my physical Bible, and I have my Bible on my phone, depending on how just how the spirit moves me i will either give him my phone with my bible already pulled up to that verse or i will go ahead and give him my give him the bible and uh and then i'll sit with them and kind of kind of walk them through sometimes i'm fluttering myself through the bible and these guys have got a lot of time and not to be you know humorous but they have a lot more time than us to be able to to reference the bible verses and um so that's and, and to give an example of a Bible that um, we have a, um, a gentleman that funds this ministry that will get, if Bob runs out of these, any of these guys run out of these student Bibles, and I, and I wanted to start it around so that you can see what is in their hands. And they've had Bibles before, but this Bible is um, explaining things, and it's just making the scriptures jump out for them uh, as a tool. They cannot have hardback. Right. And what's the reason for that? Well, they can make a weapon out of it. Anything that's hardback, they can make they can make a weapon out of anything. You know, I mean, it, it, it's amazing. I've got, I wish I, I would have brought, I have an airplane, an airplane that is this big, the wingspan on it is that big, that was given to me by a prisoner that was made out of toothpaste and toothbrushes. That's it. That everything, just the toothpaste tube, you know, they use the toothpaste to glue it together. So remember that when you brush your teeth, you know. But anyways, it's, 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 amazing, what, it's amazing what they do. It is just incredible. It's uh, their, their artistic ability uh, to, to, to draw things. And uh, um, you know, when I was at CEF when Coke was there a couple years ago, I brought my picture that I have there of, uh, and some of you I've told this already, but it was a picture of Jesus, who was a black Jesus, who had dreadlocks. And it was the most beautiful, everybody there wanted to buy that, that picture. I would not sell it. I still have it at home because it's something personal to me. And but, they're gifted. They have poetry. I've read poetry that yes, you Yes, I, I, I've and, let you do that. And, yeah, it's uh, incredible. And incredible. so some of the, even the letters, you can just hear their heart pouring out. Um, these gentlemen, what um, they've made some bad decisions. Right. And uh, they're just as gifted. Their parents loved them many times and poured into their lives. And, and so, okay. So but I'd like to say one thing oh, about, about uh, one thing about this Bible that they're passing around now. We, we had the King James Bible in there for so many years, okay? And when I, when I, when I went in and, and we started <laughs> doing the King James Version and we started asking questions, and I was raised on this King James Version, so I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm all against King James. I'm not. I'm just saying you have to be where in the children's Sunday school class, you have to put it in children's words, okay? 
And uh, the King James to me is, you know, it's 12 years plus four. That's a college education. Understand that, okay? When you get into the Bible that I'm passing around here now, this is an eighth grade education, okay? So when you pick that Bible up, most of the guys can't even read, okay? Most of them can read very little. Most of them can't see. Most of them can't hear. We have a lot of things that we have to deal with there that we don't have to deal with here in our church, okay? That we have to make, we have to make it available to them so that they, they understand. And when this Bible came on the, on the scene and it was through prayer and a lot of other things, we have miracles that had happened through this Bible just to get this Bible, okay? And the people who, this is $25 Bible, okay? This is a $25 Bible. I cannot tell you how many this, the individual has bought for our jail ministry. It's incredible. And uh, so it's a little bit about the story about that Bible. Everything that we do, there's a story behind uh, how God makes it work. And, uh, boy, I mean, these guys, boy, when you say anybody need a Bible, oh, boy, I mean, they're, I mean, that's the first words out of Christian's mouth. You got any Bibles today? You know, because he wants to make sure I got some Bibles because he's he, either him or Bobby or Noe is somebody has come up and said, I need a Bible, you know. See, and that's, that's, and that's amazing when you ask for a Bible because most of them, nobody asks for a I Bible. Know, you know? I guess from the past, some of the Bibles were being used for weightlifting. Weightlifting, yeah. Things. They put them in their, they put them in their pellet cases. Yeah. They put as many Bibles in their pellet cases as they can, and then they, they lift weights. That's how, you know, because there's no weights in there. And some of these guys, man, they're, they're buffed up, but they use these Bibles just to uh, lift weights and make them stronger. I wish they'd just read it and make them stronger. Yeah. 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 Amen. Um, okay, so now you've sung a song, and um, they're sitting there. What happens then? I, I didn't hear that. What? You've sung a song. They're sitting there. What happens then? Then Christian praise. Okay, Christian praise. Then what? And then you start I, talking. I talk. So I start. Okay. I give a message. Yeah, I give a message. Um, what have you already worked through with these gentlemen, uh, context-wise? What are your, um, what are the books of the Bible, or what are the themes? What are the things that you God has put in your heart to share with them? And my my theme is always the same. Okay, um, and and I and I say that because the Spirit of God has put it on my heart. Okay, but my my theme is always the same, and that's hope. These people do not have any hope. None whatsoever. They have burned all their bridges. People don't like them no more. Their wives hate them. Their kids hate them. Their uncles hate them. It's just they've burnt so many bridges. They're, all they want is, uh, man, and I should say this, but I give them hope with the truth. In other words, I'm not going to whiskey any of them. That's what I tell them. I'm not whiskeying you. I'm going to tell you the truth, and the truth's going to hurt. I want to tell you that you did wrong. You do you do the crime. You do the time, um, and it's it, it, that that's the hard part of it. But yet again, I want to give them. It's like Sauce was saying. You know, I Bob Spooster can't offer you anything. Uh, I go to the gas station and give twenty dollars. Once that once they spend that twenty dollars, we're done. I can't. I have nothing to offer you, but Jesus Christ. Because that way, when the money's gone and I'm gone, you still have Jesus Christ. Everybody understand that? That's the hope that I want to give them every time they're in there. I want them to know that it, the, the book, the Bible is truth. It is truth. You can go by it. You can trust it. Because I always tell them, because I, I'm going to tell you something. We, these guys are witnesses to this. We have guys that have never opened a Bible before. Christian give, I know Christian has given them something. They've... They, they, They've never opened a Bible. I can't comprehend that. The way I was brought up in the area that I was brought up, everybody opened a Bible or at least had one in their house. And, but it's not that way. And it's, uh, so it does get you, um, you know, we need, we need prayers, you know, so. All right. And so you're sharing hope. I know you've done the Psalms. You've worked yes. through Revelation. Right. You've worked through Acts. John. Uh, John. Um, but it's but basically you're going to be basic in your message. You're not going to get this. I mean, I know you can get deep with them, but only so deep. 
and you just keep sharing. And I know um, Christian has shared testimony before, um, songs and their ministry in his heart and life, and then how God did his work in your um, health situation when it came to cancer and, and things along that line. And even when the stuff was happening with Christian, you even said that how they responded because he, he's become a brother to many of them. Right. And they just broke down crying, and they, you know, I, does, can you attest to this? Uh, yeah, and I, I, I want to add to the, the fact that we are one of very few people that make the commitment to be there to share the gospel with them. And their uh, contact with the outside world is limited to us and a phone call. And um, the relationships that are established over the years, over the months, over whatever amount of time that they're there and we're there, um, is, um, is, is part of the glue and the Holy Spirit working through that relationship really is the foundation of why they continue to want to come back. If we were, if we had a distance about ourselves uh, and we, and I, I pushed to try to remember the names and learn their names, um, and I think that's important, but uh, that relationship, that connection that we have, and the fact that we're going to be there on a regular basis, and they can count on that, just like they can count on Scripture, is what uh, helps them overcome the obstacle as they might see it as connecting with Christ. Yeah, that there's a hope that Jesus in the flesh is coming to them. And that's what Jesus said. He said... Where, you know, you visited me when I was in jail. and you Because we don't know what God is doing in the hearts of these individuals. Um, for a moment, if you could, just to give you an idea of, you guys can all get online. And the jail ministry, um, there's times where Bob and I will get online and we will look at some of the individuals. And this is public notice, so I'm not sharing with anything with you. But I will go through this with Bob weekly. Uh, to be aware of, and you could just scroll down if you would, Greg, um, that different people that as time would go on, I, I would know some of these people from um, substitute teaching or being in the community, and people go to jail, okay? And people you know go to jail, and they've been in jail. Uh, your pastor was in jail. That's a whole other story um, <laughs> that I'm not sharing right now. But I was falsely accused. And um, but uh, every one of them, many of them, have, they all say that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, did, I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and uh, so it is one of those things where that, that goes on and you can get on this. Then there is something that you can click. And I'm not going to ask you to do this um, for sex offenders. You can click on sex offenders and you can look in your area who are the ones that are registered so that you know. And some of them are in that building yeah, and um, some of them are out and about. And, and, and as I'm at McDonald's, there was a gentleman that we would see there regularly and I go, oh, I didn't know that. And I don't, but I don't want to be this person that, you know, has a, this huge amount of judgment. But these things um, you can be aware of. This is just the latest sheet that came out. And, uh, but it comes out every week, and Bob and I will go through it, and there'll be people, and it's like, oh, that girl, I know she's been hanging around some guys that isn't good for her. Um, I can see why she's in there. There's people that are in there. Here's why they're in there. They didn't pay their bills. That's why they're in there. It Amen. wasn't that they did some deep, dark, but guess what? They make that sheet of paper, or they get in that jail. And so your heart starts to have an understanding all the people that are in there are bad, and if you're not in there, you're okay, yeah. okay? Yeah. Now, isn't that such a misnomer? It's such a um, deceitful thing that we start to think, you know, I've never done been in there, so I must be better, you know. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts, guys, on that stuff? Last night, um, I was coming from back from CEF, and uh, I felt your pain. I, I pulled out of CEF, and I started down Highway M, and I was going about 20 because Josh was behind me in his car, and he just sort of held back, and I was just trying to think, okay, is he okay, or, you know, is he coming? Well, I topped that little hill as you get past that first stretch, and there was some headlights coming at me, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm still going kind of slow, 20 for a 55 speed zone, and the guy got behind me, and he turns around, and the lights come on. <laughs> and so 
there I am with, with that, you know. And it's like, well, you know, I did nothing. Yeah. And, and you said, had to lead worship today. And, Thanks. And you I almost told him, got I in the said, yeah, I, I even uh, work in the prison, you know, ministry down there. I told the guy when I finally talked with him. But, I mean, I, I could have not been here today. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, so well, I, I, you know, another thing that I wanted to say about this, this, this thing that's up here, and everybody's looking at it up here. Parents, let me tell you something. There's two two places you need to have on your computer if you have a computer. I have them on mine. Number one is this place, okay? It just takes a couple minutes, right? Me and you going through there. And the other one is where the pedophiles are. You need to open that up and to see who is out there. Please listen to me. I know it's hard, but I mean, Karen, the first time I did that to Karen, she says, 22,965, we're 22,952. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, right down the road. That's where he's at. Well. And that's the ones that are registered. That's right. That's right. That's the ones that do register, and uh, and they're getting a little bit more stiffer on that. If they don't register, they're, they're going to sing, uh, they're going to see us, us again, okay? Uh, and I'm glad to see that. I really am. So it, it is important for you parents to understand you need to have that on your, on your computer. You need to get there. You need to see it because you will be amazed. And what I like about the jail ministry is, and that's why I don't do prison ministry, I do jail ministry, is because of what the pastor said. Most of them are in there. I, we have an opportunity to preach to them because they didn't pay their bills. They're going to be back out in the community looking for a church, hopefully. In like a couple days, probably. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly right. So we have the opportunity. We have two, two good worlds there that, we're, that we can do that. I want to build on what he was talking about. Um, when, when John was here last week, he was talking about those seven times it was strategic, what do you call them? Basically touches into St a person's Strategic life. opportunities to, to minister to them and to share the gospel with them. This is a time where failure is that strategic moment. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's uh, clearly a very strong opportunity. Um, and we've, we've kidded around about, you know, we have a very captive audience. And, yeah, I mean, it's easy to chuckle. But, but in fact, it really is. We are captive. They are captive. We are captive to the truth. And so here's our opportunity to um, to co help them connect and um, and I think about what you guys were describing as far as uh, situations that we see in a jail. You know, there there might be a spous spousal abuse situation happening, or there might be a sex offense, or there might just be a bad check, or it may be a DWI, or it may be you know. Um, Bob and I have have said time and time again it's you know we're just we're just steps ourselves from stumbling and falling and landing in there and I and I think it's I think people it's easy for us to forget the uh, severity of what can play out if we are not walking in um, in the light of Christ um, and, it, and it can happen that quickly and um, so you know my heart goes out to them in the regard that yes, they um, yes they did make this this public uh, display of uh, they they committed this public crime, but there's also public there's crimes that are being committed throughout all of our lives that we fail to recognize because they don't have the same like you said they don't have that attachment of jail attached to them and and so we need to be aware of that and that that humbles me all the time yeah, and it and it should it should and i'm i'm grateful for your you gentlemen and your words so um so and we'll get a, a couple of testimonies in a second or a few of your guys with testimonies but i want to talk through the rest of thursday night um so bob gets done have an invitation usually it's the um i'm assuming it's a salvation thing sometimes yeah. maybe guys come up for counsel i don't know how much more you can give mm -hmm. uh time wise mm -hmm. But um, you, you, in fact, in your Bible, could you show them? He has it, and he said, he actually told me he has this in every one of his Bibles. I, I don't go anywhere without it in, in, my, in my Bible. And this is just what uh, these guys all know. It's the sinner's prayer. And, uh, and, and, and you have to understand, when they come to Christ in there, 
a lot of times they don't want anybody to know it, okay? That's why I say I want every head bowed. I want every eye closed, and I don't, I don't continue until that's done, because you always get the guys, and they're in your face going, I ain't gonna do it, okay? So you have, to, you have to stare them down, and once you stare them down, then they finally do it. But they don't want people, they don't want people to see what they're doing. So what I do is, and I ask them, I said, if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, look up at me. And so a lot of them, here, here's the way it is. They're like this, and they go. <laughs> they want me to see them. They don't want anybody else to see them, okay? And then you get guys that are all excited, and they're crying, and they're, they're, they're just like, you know, somebody poking their head out of the dirt, you know? And, oh, here we go, here I am, you know? But it's, it's, it, you have to be very careful. You, you know, it's a different world in there, okay? Uh, they don't like to see tears, okay? I think because of Christian and these guys here, we see more tears now than we've ever seen in that jail. I feel, I, I'm telling you, because the Spirit of God has come in, and I think we're in the last days. And he's opening hearts that will never be opened, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, a Christian gets people on the street to say, man, I seen you in the jail. You remember me? And I see that all the time at Kroger's. They come up to me, and I can't remember who they are. We see so many, you know? And like, oh, well, yeah, okay, you know? Oh, I, I really appreciate it. Me and my wife's doing good now. The kids are doing good. I got a job now. And, but they weren't in for some major thing. They were just in because they didn't, play, they didn't pay child support. Mm -hmm. Well, now he's back with his wife, and everything's happy, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's very difficult it, it, it sometimes to, to understand how things work, and that's why we have learned to give it to the Holy Spirit. In other words, when we go in there and I go in there and I open the Word of God, every time the Christian gets done praying, I open the Word of God, I'm already telling the Spirit, it's your day. It's your day. You take over. You take over. And so you have gentlemen that pray to receive Christ, and yes. I'll call him sometimes Thursday night, or I'll call him Friday morning, and he's and here's Bob's line. Get ready. You're not going to believe what happened. <laughs> Every time. So I get to the point where I don't believe what happened. Um, but honestly, it's exciting because some days it's amazing in the area of the big numbers, and then there's other days there may be two, which is like two. That's golden. Um, and so these guys, some of them receive Christ, some of them, you know, they'll go back to their pod. But the night doesn't end there anymore. It used no. to end that way. Right. What's happening now? What, what is going on now? Well, we, we go down to, to PC, which is uh, protective custody, which are your pedophiles and people who are on suicide watch. Uh, this week, uh, us three here, Christian couldn't make it, but um, this week... All three of us were where we had two that were on suicide watch, and they put them in the Pillsbury Doughboy suit, which is a big, so they don't hurt themselves and all that. And uh, they allowed them, and this is another thing. So they this come is, in there with that suit? No, no, no. Oh, okay, no, I'm no, thinking that no, would be hard to preach to. Yeah, right. They, uh, they, we have to wait for them, okay. and then once they get the okay from the, the lady that's in the bullpen down in booking, okay, because all this takes place is down in booking behind the glass walls. And uh, so they allow them to come in, and then when they come in, they change clothes. They change their clothes, and they come on in. But this is where we have, this is where we have the pedophiles and, and that type of thing. And, and, and so they'll come in. Sometimes you preach the same message twice. If yes. I remember right. And a lot of times I'll give it to Bobby. Bobby will, Bobby will preach one, and, and, and Noe does. And if I'm really tired and after doing it two hours, I, or after doing it an hour and a half upstairs, I'm, right. and Christian will do some sometimes, you know. So okay. it's, it's, you know, we'll split it up. Team. Yeah. Okay. Or sometimes some of you go, hey, I got to leave or something. Right. Somebody sometimes exactly. we don't see the PCs. Yeah. I mean, it, right. it, it, and, but, there's that flexibility. Not that we want it to be flexible, but it is what it is for, for the circumstances at the time. Yeah. And from what I've heard is, in the jail, the the other inmates don't like these usually. Oh no, they shut the they to bring the PC to bring those people the uh, uh, the protective custody people into us. They gotta shut the whole jail down. They shut all the pods down. Everybody goes back to their rooms and they're locked down. They hate these guys. Okay, they do not want any part of these guys. And the pedophiles, when they, when they transfer them, the place goes down. Because a lot of those guys, from what I've heard, prisoners even have ethics. And so we're bad, but these are really bad. 
Right. And they'd be willing to kill them yes. even if they got the chance because yes. all, most of them have children, and so they're envisioning mm -hmm. you did this to a yes. child, you'd do this to my kid if yes. you had a chance, so I'm going to kill you. Yes. And so they have to shut everything down. So their schedule is messed up so that these can come and be ministered to, if I'm reading yes. right. Okay. But and another I, thing is, too, is the guards are happy with us when we have when we have the guys upstairs in the gymnasium. We're doing a good thing. Oh, Mr. Spooster, you're doing a good thing. But let us go downstairs to the pedophiles. They don't want to talk to you. Okay? They understand. Man, they're like, we don't know why you like those guys. We don't know why you're coming down and preaching these guys. They're going to hell. And they're they going want to, them to go to hell. Yes, yeah. yes. So the, the mood changes. So you have to be, you know, thank God we have, a, we have a holy father that watches over us. Amen. I mean, he changes situations for us. He really does. Because we have a lot of people now, a lot of the guards that, you know, they'll open the door for us, let us in, and we don't hear any more from them until we're ready to go. Any other gentlemen concerning that? I just wanted to add that, you know, I, this is now my opinion, but I believe that it, that it has some, some merit. There has been, we've done this now a number of years, and I see that there has been a, a, a opening of the doors very freely t for us to come in. Amen. They never, they, they don't, you know, they, they trust us like the guard, like the, the, the inmates trust us, trust us. And um, I believe that the reason that we see the PCs and they allow us to see the PCs and allow us to continue to do this is because there is a residual effect and there is a ripple effect in the town. And, and you know, um, whether they get saved or not, whether they say they're getting saved or not, the fact of the matter is is that there is a significant amount of people that leave that, uh, that facility changed um, because of the Lord, and they are also changed within the walls Amen. Amen. of that environment. And so... You know that makes their job easier too. Um, so I, no, that's huge. That's and that's the spirit of God working. Mm -hmm. You know, Bobby, did you have anything about that at all? Well, um, I, I really enjoy. Like I enjoy the whole aspect of it. But pr protective custody has been really cool for me, just because we get a little more to interact with them a little more, and yeah. we get to talk and discuss, get more personal with what they're struggling with in their cells. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been really cool, just because you see God working in these lives. I got to see. God breaks someone down right in front of me, leading him to Christ. I mean, this would be someone we'd, it'd be easy to pass judgment. I can't believe he would do that and yeah. no remorse or anything like that. And then the next moment he's in tears. How can I live with myself having done this? It's like, wow, like the spirit just changes somebody right in front of you. Yeah, one of the evenings I got to lead the PC group, I had gotten into Spurgeon's morning and evening. And the yeah. evening devotion for that evening was he who receives sinners. And the guy that Bobby's talking about was a guy that there's a lacrosse down the street here of the little girl that got run over by her boyfriend. That's him. And he's a protective custody guy. And I'm battling in my heart saying, how do I forgive this guy? Mm -hmm. I got a 21 year old daughter. Yeah. I empathize with that dad. I, you know, it, it just makes me want to wring the neck. And I'm reading this, he who receives sinners and God just brought to me the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And boy, how hard is Christianity. Yeah. That, that we, we are supposed to forgive everybody if we expect to be forgiven. Amen. There's no room for bitterness. Amen. And that's so hard. And it, it just slapped me in the face being face to face with this kid that desperately needed to be forgiven and to realize that, you know, I really haven't looked at Christianity quite right <laughs> up until that experience. And, and that kid doing that, you know, was a slap in the face to me. Do you really forgive people? Do you, do you think if you were faced with that, you'd forgive somebody? I don't know. And so that, that's just, it's just kind of like a wake-up call, uh, a wake-up check to what, what is your Christianity made of? Amen. Anything else, yeah, Christian? Yeah, I think, that, I, I think you can also say this as, as I look at as my partners here. You come to the jail ministry and you'll change your life. You come to the jail ministry, it'll change your thinking. 
You come to jail ministry, it'll change the way that you live your life. Because you see things that in this church and in the atmosphere that we have at home, you don't see. You don't have to make decisions on. You don't have to forgive. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you have sin in your life, this is what we do. This is what the pastor does here on this pulpit every Sunday. When people out there setting have sin in their life, they're miserable. They want a way to get rid of it. Please show me a way to get rid of it. That's what we do. We show them Jesus Christ and what he did. Let me tell you what it does, how it turns out. These guys can give you a testimony the rest of the day. We can start right now until tonight. Give you testimonies of people that have changed their... I mean, they just walk in with smiles. They, have, they are forgiven. They can start over again. This is what we as Christians have got to see in this world. We have got to be around people, and we, when we're around people, we have to be around people, and when we're around them, we have, to have, we have to allow them to open up their hearts to us and get rid of that, get rid of that stuff that's in there. Because I'm going to tell you something, there's no, there's pedophiles that we have in there right now that we talk to every week, and Bobby counsels them, and, and so does Noe. No, that, that, that incident that Noe said, Holy Spirit, come into that place. You people here would not even understand. Amen, brothers? Yeah. You, yeah, you, just, you just can't. And it's not, it's not, you know, with disrespect or anything. It's just it, you got to be there. I want to I wanna touch on the humility factor um, a little bit. Bob talked about when they accept Christ, um, and he talks about how they... They have, there's that shame and there's that humility component. And it's a humility meter, I think, within them um, looking up at him. And um, it is, humility has definitely been a big part of what's happened for me. Um, I am humbled much more than I've ever been humbled. And I'm glad that I have that opportunity. <clears throat> and, you know, I was, I was just drawing an analogy um, about how this is why we go to third world third world countries to be humbled and to make a difference out there too when we see that, I mean that's not the only reason but that that's a significant reason for why we want to if we if we're in the midst of all that junk then we can put the things into perspective and we can see how amazing Christ is but if we're not putting ourselves out there in that area then we're we're missing out on Amen. the opportunity Amen. to, you know, to really see the full. That's why you know we did. That's why we did Joplin. That's why that, that's why people do what they do when they make a commitment to Christ to be on a mission for Him. And 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 usually it's got to be in a dark, unfortunate, dysfunctional area for us to really see the amazing stuff that happens. Amen. And I think you know, just if the darker it is, a little bit of light is blinded. Oh, yeah. yeah. A um, couple more things. I know I'm not giving these uh, friends uh, time for questions, but they can, I would think, come on and ask you any time uh, some stuff. But um, the, the guards, uh, Paul talks about constantly in the scriptures how they're stuck with him, and he's preaching, and they're getting saved and things like that. Do you have any stories or thoughts of what's going on in the guards' uh, lives? Yeah, we. I've, I got. I got a few of them because I, I deal with them more, you know, uh, than most of them do. Because um, they're during the week. Sometimes I have to come in and give money to somebody, and they're out there. Um, but we have. We have had. I've had the opportunity to lead two. Lead two guards to to Christ. One night I was there by myself. And we had like, wow, nine guys come to the Lord. Well, the guard come up to me. I didn't know this guard. He was a new guard. I didn't know him. And he says, Bob, uh, he says, uh, you, don't, you don't leave. You stay right here. And, I, and I'll be right back. Well, I've never had a guard tell me that. I'm figuring, well, they're going to put me in a suit and put me in that cell, you know. Because, you know, I don't know this guy. Was he mad about what I preached about? Did it hit him the wrong way or whatever? But he said, I, I want you to stay right here till I get back. I'm going to put these guys in their pot. And I, I said, it was the night that I gave the one that you got to know that you know. Okay? That was the message that I gave. You got to know that you're saved. And uh, 
So he put them all away, you know, and I'm sitting there and boy, a thousand things, are, wrong things are going through my mind. I'm thinking, oh boy, well, I'm really, I've said something wrong, you know. <laughs> so he comes back in and he shuts the door. Now, I want you to understand, he is on, we are on camera, okay? Everywhere we go, we're on camera. The camera is in there. And um, he gets over by the door over there and he says, uh, you don't know me. And I said, no, I don't. And he says, uh, I want to know that I know. I never had that happen, <laughs> especially a guard. Mm -hmm. Never, never had that happen. Because there's guards that are jerks sometimes. Oh, they, they can be, they can be. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have a few of those. But he but, prayed, did he pray to receive Christ? Yes, prayed right there to receive Christ. Um, it was unbelievable. And the next week, the next week, he went on duty full time as a sheriff, sheriff's deputy. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I, I met him in, uh, I met him in, uh, in uh, Applebee's, and uh, it was like we were brothers. You know, he was not afraid to come up to me and talk to me, I, and I thought that was really neat. And I had another incident where the lady turned her, turned her uh, son in for drugs, and uh, so his, her son was in the jail, and every time she, she was a deputy there, in the jail and every time she walked by him he would say the filthiest words the most degrading words to his mother call her everything that he could because she turned him in and so she asked me one day after it was all over with if I would meet her downstairs in the garage and I said yeah there's a picnic table down there and she was down there and um and when I went down and she was crying and I put my arm around her. That's the thing you don't do. You don't go to a guard and put your arm around them, okay? There's a space that has to be there. We, we have really, they have allowed us to, to get rid of that space. But, but a lot of times, that's, that's, you just don't do that. And um, at an opportunity, you know, and I told her, you know, we talked about it. And I told her that she probably saved, saved his life. Uh, and that's all I could tell her. And we prayed and she received Christ there too. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing how God just opens up. God knows before we get there. God knows this morning, before anybody even gets here, he knows who's going to be here. He knows what he's going to say, and he knows what hearts he's going to touch this morning. That's the faith we got to have, people, that when we meet people, we are the light, and we can talk to them about anything. Because when that happens, that's when God opens doors, you know. And that's what I see in the jail ministry. That's why I fear nothing. I, I mean, go for it, you know. Um, anybody else have anything as we're wrapping up? I know that afterwards, many times, you gentlemen go to some, if you can, you go to McDonald's and right. kind of rehash what happened or, yeah. um, you know, talk through different things. And, and then you're done. Well, and, and we, but we actually you aren't done because you get letters, you get requests, right. you get bus tickets to people so that they can go see their parents or their wife. Um, this church, uh, just so you know, our church on our budget yearly has a three thousand dollars. It's not always used, but three thousand dollars has been allotted for this ministry for these gentlemen to be used um, in different aspects of ministry, and let alone the people that are handing Bob money saying use this however you deem fit and um yeah. and actually we are the highest paid missionary that you guys pay <laughs> and you know believe it or not really we are uh with the budget that we, that we do that you allow us to do no, no you gentlemen yeah, are not paid, paid. Our, mission, our, mission, our mission is paid for yeah these yeah, are volunteers these, this is all voluntary yeah um well let me pray and like i said these gentlemen they if you have any questions concerning maybe god's put on your heart but if you could remember at 7 o'clock Thursday night. Amen. Every Thursday pray. night. Pray. You just pray. Um, let's continue to see what God does. Anytime Thursday. Anytime. You yeah, pray anytime take, Thursday. You'll take prayer Thursday. In fact, anytime. I'll make it broader than that. Pray anytime. Yeah. You know, just remember. There you go. That's what God uses. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to ask, uh, as we're wrapping up, I'm going to ask uh, Bobby Turper if he'd close our time in prayer. So if you would, Bob. Father, we just come to you and we thank you for all the opportunities you give us to uh, serve you. It's truly about you and it's not about us, Lord. So we just thank you for these opportunities. We ask that you would uh, encourage us and draw us near to Jesus, your son, Lord, and uh, that you would take our bodies, Lord, and you would live your life through us to um, 
obedience and fulfill the purposes that you have created us for, Lord, that you would do that through us and that you would uh, fill us with all wisdom to know and discern um, what you're trying to do for us, Lord. We just give you the praise and the glory for all this and just ask that you would unite us in love and uh, build us up to obey, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.